It is 43 degrees and a bit rainy. Pretty much just the wind, the water, the earth, and me, Shug, looking for some solitude. And I'm still on the portage up to Angleworm Lake. Yeah, if I remember right, this is about a two mile portage. <laughs> Glad I'm just walking and not toting a canoe. you had a great Memorial Day weekend. I did. I was in Chicago with my wife and daughter. Got home Saturday night. Returned the dog Bean back to my daughter. That little dog stole my heart. You're such a good dog, aren't you? Yeah, come on. Come on. Crawl. Let's go. Come on. But it's nice to get out here and grab a little time in the boundary waters. Got the old ohm. The load feels good. It's supposed to get down to 34 degrees tonight. It's about 44 right now. It was drizzling. Tomorrow's going to be warmer. Yeah, it's good to be here in the boundary waters. All alone out here. All alone. That's how I like it. Oh, we got some real fresh moose poop out here. And that excites me. That excites me a lot. Hmm. I'm resisting an urge. Resist, resist. Why, Shug? Why? <laughs> you left me with a broken heart so blue.
I gotta tell you, it's pretty cool out here in the Boundary Waters. It's about 41 degrees and there's a breeze just coming right across. And, uh, you know, I, I brought clothes for it. And so I, I know I'm gonna be good, but it's supposed to get down to about 34 by about five in the morning. And uh, warm up to about 68 tomorrow at some point. Just doing a little different water thing on this one. Going with your Sawyer Mini squeeze filter. And I'd like to thank Travis Avery from Sawyer who sent me uh, some permethrin, which I sprayed on my clothes here because there could be deer ticks out. I don't know in this cold, but I've heard there are. Keeps the skeeters off, but I haven't seen any bugs. Uh, there might be some black flies, but on a cool day like this, not so sure. And he sent me uh, some Picardin, and he sent me this, this water system, and another gravity one I didn't bring. I gotta, I gotta mess with it at home a little bit, but uh, thanks Travis. I've always used Sawyer stuff. Whenever I've used permethrin before, I've used Sawyer, and uh, I'm gonna have myself a cocoa and um, a pre-dinner dinner. Maybe a late lunch, we call it. Loon out there jumping around in the lake, and uh, I plan on being asleep by seven o'clock. That's my plan. I'm gonna stick to it, but I'm just gonna sit here and space out and enjoy the quiet woods for a while. Woo, buddy. And my rig for the weekend is my DIY Black Crow Tarp, 11 foot ridge line. It's got about three and a half foot side, so it's about seven all the way across. Um, there's my old Black Bishop bag from Green Bean holding my Orbonnet El Dorado hammock. I've got Franken quilt down underneath, partial under quilt I made years ago. Rated to about 20 degrees, and I got a, a brand new, first time out, 20 degree Warbonnet. Diamondback top quilt with draft collar. That's the green part. And it's called that. And I'm going to show you this. I'll get it out when the weather's a little nicer. Maybe tomorrow. And it's got a real nice foot box on it like that. Mm-hmm. And this will be my first night out sleeping in that. Yes, indeed. I got my trusty ULA Ohm 2.0. Quitos, Marcos. And all various patches I have sewn on from places I like and things I've done. And the ohm carry great. Even though I'm kind of packing almost like for winter here. I've got the inReach Explorer with me. And that will link with my phone. And it's got an SOS, which is the main reason I have it. But I can track my route, get the weather report. I can send a text home. And uh, if things go bad, that thing hooks up to a satellite, then I should get some help. And of course, water this time I'm using, this is all I brought, was Sawyer squeeze system. Got my trusty old Thermarest sit pad that I'll use under my feet with my partial underquilt. My Reflectix, my Outdoor Research Rain Jacket. Got my Ursac right here with all my food in it. Got my lunch stuff, and I'm real excited about lunch. I want them right now, but I'm going to save them for tomorrow. Got me some sardines and mustard sauce. And I got my hillbilly pot, my foster mug, my regular old cook kit there. And I brought my wee little candle lantern, because it's ever so fun. But right now, I'm going to have me some peanuts. Sit here and stare at Whiskey Jack Lake. It's surprisingly cold today. <laughs> I mean, is it getting down to 35 tonight? You never know what you're going to get out here in the boundary waters. It can get hot and cold. Got my permit. You know, you got to stop by the ranger station, pick up your permit that you have to get online and pay to be out here. If they catch you without a permit, you're in a heap of trouble.
there will be no fire. Firewood's pretty wet out here, and I, I'm, I'm too lazy to have one. I got my little down jacket with sleeves. I tossed that in last minute because I know I'll need that in the morning. Threw on some uh, my dry camp clothes now. You know, in a, in a strange way, I'm kind of gleeful that the weather is overcast and cold. Not too windy, but, you know, there's always a little wind coming off the lake. Not really rainy. It's supposed to rain again about maybe 6 o'clock, but we'll see. But on this Memorial Day Monday, just being out here to have it all to myself, it is exactly what I needed. I'm going to quit talking to you. Have a cup of coffee, enjoy some solitude. But I will come back to you because I'm glad you're out here with me in the Minnesota's Boundary Waters Wilderness Canoe Area. And I do mean wilderness. It's isolated out here. I decided rather than a cup of coffee, I'm going to have myself some Thai tea. Not Thai chi. Not chai tea. Some Thai tea. Thai tea. And I'm also toting these along, and I'm quite excited, and I want to thank uh, Jason and Brigitte, who sent me this uh, care package from the West Indies. I don't even know where that is. But this bar right here is called the Lunch Bar. The Lunch Bar is a cream-filled wafer covered in caramel, crisp rice, and crunchy peanuts in milk chocolate. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago is where that candy is from, and those guys, you know... They never hang out separately. It's always Trinidad and Tobago. It's never Tobago and Trinidad. And I usually don't accept that, but somehow they just found my address and it showed up in the mail. So Jason and Bridget, thank you, man. Maximum respect. Cool. I always get excited when I light my fancy feast stove. Always. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Get that old hillbilly pot on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that there makes me happy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got myself a pretty boil going on down there now. Mm. Go ahead and try some of this Thai tea. Oh, it's kind of a bright orange tang. <laughs> it's got kind of a tang color to it. Anyway, look at the color of this. This is uh, this is exciting. Look at that. All right. Let's have a sip now of the Thai tea. That is interesting. That doesn't taste like anything I've ever had before. Let me think about how to describe this. I'm not really sure. Just because of the color, I'm wanting to think there's a fruit flavor, but I don't think there is. That's just some kind of tea I never had, but uh, if I'm going to have it, this is the place to have it right here. Well, I couldn't stand it while I'm having the Thai tea. I had to have some of the lunch bar. Look at that log. Man, you can see those crispy rice things. And let's look at that inside. Yes, sir. See how good that looks? It tastes just as good as it heads for my mouth right now. Wow. That wafery cookie surrounded by that chocolate and these hard, crunchy, nutty rice things. Goodness gracious, that's good eating. That is fantastic. I'm pretty excited. Back at Gourmet. Dottie's chicken and dumplings. I love Dottie. I never met her. I guess that's her right there.
Well, I got my food bag. This is my Ursac. It's a Kevlar bag. You can just tie it off on a tree with a square knot and then an extra knot. And uh, I don't know, a bear could bite through it. Some people have had bears bite in and crush your food, but it saves me having to throw a line and hang it. And uh, I've not had a problem so far. Pretty good with it. And then what I do in the morning, and I get asked this a lot, I don't sleep with my coffee, I don't sleep with any food. When I wake up, I run over here, get my food bag, run back over to my tarp, and if I need to adjust it to lift it up so I can enjoy the morning, like, you know, raise one end, I do that real quick, crawl back in, I get inside my top quilt, and then I have my breakfast from the hammock. That's how I do it. That's what I do. And uh, so all my food is always hung at night. None of it's with me. Uh, it's just a discipline I do. I do it every time. I just don't want it right under me because then if something comes to get it, they're over here and they're not over there where I am. They're, they're here. And I'm going to crawl on into the hammock. I'm tired and uh, I'd like to see the rest of the sunset. I'll kick around here a little bit and get a good night's slumber and in the morning uh, we shall reconvene and uh, I'll tell you how I slept and you can nod your head and watch it. So, uh, slumber time for me, Suge, of the third person. Peanut butter pap tart, peanut butter pap tart, in me mouth it goes. Okay, it's after 8 o'clock in the morning. I slept, and I slept, and it was cold. Still is a little bit, but finally the sun's popping out back there. Quite a chilly morning up here. The lake was full of fog. The loons were just flapping and flying. Man, last night... All night, those loons would just go off, and it was so loud and beautiful. I'm going to tell you, I really did like this Warbonnet Diamondback top quilt. Super warm in it all night long. You know, it's a 20 degree, so of course I would be, but definitely no, no cold spots. I really did like this draft collar. This green edition here that you can tuck under. To draft or just have it up here. I really liked it so uh I'll show it to you a little bit later, but <clears throat> that worked well and of course Frank and Quilt kept me warm underneath. Pad under my feet inside this top quilt, my little thermorest sit pad. That keeps my feet warm when I'm sleeping with a partial under quilt. And the little bit that's exposed, uh, you know, my, my calves or whatever, I never feel anything there. They're kind of got a little top quilt under them. And uh El Dorado slept good. My tarp kept me covered, and if there was any sprinkle, I didn't feel it, so that's a good night in a hammock. My plan is to kind of hang into camp a little while, and just go back track. I don't really feel like doing the whole loop, because the, um, the campsite's on the west side. You know, I know the next one, Home Lake Campsite, north of here. Eh, it's not great. You don't really see the lake. You have to walk down to the lake to see it. And then if you go over to the west side... There's a campsite. You got a kind of a walk, you know, till you get to it. And me and uh, Wandering Fool stayed on it. Same kind of site back in the woods, not on a lake. So what I think I'm going to do is just go back down south because there's two or three uh, little sites that are right on the water. And that's where I want to be. I want to be right on the water. So what I'm saying is this is not really a miles trip. The angleworm is not a, it's not a big mile trail. It's a trail for just coming up and enjoying the woods. Woo, buddy! It was really a lot of night sounds last night from the critters. Uh, it was either Sasquatch jumping into the lake or a beaver slapping, but it sounded huge. I thought a tree fell in. It was out that way behind you. I need to look. It's not happening now. But I... Boom! And then, uh, of course, the loons were just... I mean, it was amazing. It was a single loon call that would start with this low... It almost sounded like a bagpipe getting ready when you know when you hear that but there's always that drone it was like a drone and then it came into the cries it was great worth getting woken up for
Yeah, that's what I'm seeing from my hammock. And there's your backwoods latrine pooper. I got my poop pack. I love it when all the tatters are wrangled in one spot. So we're taking a look here at the Warbonnet Diamondback Top Quilt 20 Degree Sewn with Pride in Colorado, made in the USA. So here's that draft collar, which none of my top quilts have, and I, I really decided I like it. You can tuck it under, I just sort of leave it up. And why they call this the Diamondback is the way they sew the baffles. It squeezes into a small channel, so the down by your feet will stay in these baffles it comes up there's a diamond here's a diamond and then same at the top all that down will stay up there because one problem with down items is sometimes people get cold in their stuff and they don't realize all their down ends up down here you have to migrate your down puff it up make sure you shake these things I have a video on migrating down that I'll put down in the the description box below this video it shows you just how to shake your down and get it in the place where you want it to be on you. Oh, I wanted to show you too this nice big foot box. That's got down in it. So instead of a instead of it just being sewn flat like that, it's got this nice round foot box. This is a custom made. Um, the the outside fabric is a is a uh, 15D ripstop nylon, and so is the inside. You can get lighter fabrics. I just uh. On one of these colors, the, the green and the gold. So here we are looking at the uh, inside. I flipped it over. And you can see that diamond pattern a little bit better and why they call it the diamond back. And the idea is so that all your down it doesn't either end up by your head end or your foot end. And here's something else I really like about this one. It has elastic around the perimeter of this cut. So you can tighten it up. And I have mine kind of, uh, you know, lightly tightened. And it cinches it up around you. Mine is a 55 inch long regular 20 degree. And it's got a snap right here. So if you're a ground sleeper, particularly, it's nice to snap this thing up. And you got your cinch right here to tighten up your, your collar area. Plus the cinch down here, which is easy, that will um, cinch it up so you can draw it in. So here, for instance, if I just pull on this, you can see it'll draw these sides in right here, which is really great for sleeping on the ground. And then if I snap it, which I don't do in the hammock so much, but for ground sleeping, it's really good. All right, then you slip your head through, and you got your pulls for your draft collar there. And then you have these hooks right here, and they sell a little rig that these will slip around your camping pad. So for a ground sleeper, this is a real nice top quilt if it's your kind of thing. So I'll loosen that up a little bit. It really worked nice last night in the hammock to help keep that tucked in around me just a little bit. You know, a lot of people collect cars or certain things. I collect top quilts. I just like having them. I loan them to friends. I like trying them out. I'm intrigued by them. And the bugs are out now. And I said mine was custom made. If you were to go to their site, you can either buy a stock one or just click on the link that says custom made and that way you can pick more colors more types of fabrics um, and, the, and they make it for you you know you just go down the line and click the boxes and your length and your width and uh, how you want the foot box or do you want the whole thing um, open like a quilt and I think it's a zippered foot box I just have my foot box sewn and then do you want the elastic around uh, the opening underneath you or not you know some things like that so uh, I forgot to say that so I'm saying it now I have a lot of 20 degree top quilts I have several I should say I think 20 degree is the most versatile um, you know I winter camp so then I start getting into my zeros and below but I can add a 20 degree to a zero and get lower but for most people 20 degree I'd rather have a 20 degree than a 40 degree unless I lived in Georgia or Florida or Texas yeah I'd probably go with a 40 degree eh shoes why do you like your name on everything you have? Huh? Shush. Seems cocky, I think they say in America. Well, Enrique, 
I didn't put it there, someone else did. It's my brand and Dutch from Dutchware put these on. My Dutch shorts, they're really light like argon fabric. A pair of shorts, they have a little stuff sack pocket there you can put your phone or some change in. And really they're meant for oh, through hikers when they have to go to the laundromat and have something to wear while they're washing their stuff. Weigh nothing. And then you just sort of take them and you got the little stuff sack, which he put my name on there because I forget a lot of time who I am. And you just stuff these right back in. And I did not buy these. They came in the mail as a gift to me from Dutch and his crew, and it just said a little thing. Uh, it said, Shug, thank you for what you do for the hammock community. Well, <laughs> I'm just doing what I can. I do feel a big part of the hammock community, even though... Uh, I don't hang out with everybody as much as I really should. But anyway, those just stuffed down into a little sack like that. Woo, buddy. Thank you, Dutch. I am trying out a new camp shoe thing for this trip. I've got this pair of flip-flops I've worn for years, these Speedos. But I got me some nicer ones for around the house and down by the lake that actually have arch support. Or I should say Meg got me a nicer pair that has arch support. These are really light. Uh, they're a Speedo pair. And I got me some socks, um, you know, with the toe. What are Japanese Jikotabi socks? And I got them on Amazon. I just put in flip-flop socks. If you do that, and they work great for flip-flops when it's a little chilly, like today. And uh, really nice for around camp. Put a butter on this because I'm not with anybody. And uh, nobody else has to look at me flopping around. Flip-flop, 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 flip-flop. So... You know, would have brought my Crocs. Probably could have used them yesterday. It was a little cool, but I probably would have put my boots back on anyway, just because it was cold. I think it did get down to about 36 degrees last night. Ah, bugs. 36 degrees, 34. I mean, it was definitely cold. And I got up at 4 a.m. to take a pee, and it was light. And the lake was just covered in fog. It was cool, but it was cold. I could see my breath. I could tell it was cold, but I was super warm all snugged up back in my rig. Also trying a new hat this time. I love this hat, this Columbia Bora Bora, but in wet weather it tends to flop. And uh, Meg bought me this one and they're from REI. It's a Connor, I think it's an Australian hat. And I kind of got it really for around the house doing chores. And like the Tilly, it has a little pocket up in the crown. You can put a little map or Hicks, Hickory uses his for his scribe gear, a little pencil and paper. I thought that might be a little more substantial in the rain. It's a little warmer. You know, it's only got those little vent holes, whereas this Bora Bora has this mesh all the way through it, which really gives some flow, keeps you a little cooler when you're hiking in the heat, but does give good sun protection.